Hi everybody, welcome back to our channel. If you're new around here, be sure that you like and subscribe and welcome. And don't forget to hit that notification bell, <laughs> just like that. <laughs> okay, that was awkward. But that's okay, we're gonna keep going. Anyway, this is a very special episode yes. of Hanging with the Hamiltons. As you guys know, it's Valentine's Day. It's all about love mm. and relationships and sex. Ooh, okay. I'm, I'm so, listening. <laughs> so what we're about to do, guys, is bring back the love seat for a special episode. Yes. So we asked you to send in what's going on in your dating life, mm -hmm. what's going on in your relationship, and you did not disappoint. So let's get into those stories. Let's just jump right in. So this says, my boyfriend of five years cheated on me while I was nine months pregnant. He had sex with someone else. I decided to stay in the relationship for the sake of the baby, but I still hold a huge grudge about his cheating. Do you think our relationship is doomed since I can't happen to get over it? Is there anything I can do to help myself? It's a tough question right there. What do you think? Girl, yes, okay. I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but if somebody cheats on you when you're pregnant, damn! <laughs> There's no respect there, and you deserve way more res more respect. You are carrying this man's child, okay? Yes. Your feet hurt, your ankles are swollen, you hungry, and he out here boinking some body? I think not. I absolutely agree. It is ultimately about respect, mm -hmm. and you know, to get you pregnant and to then cheat on you. I mean, don't do that to yourself. Get out of there. It's one thing though, when you have a child with someone, it's not so easy to just leave them, right? Co-parenting is a great option. You know, you guys can still love the child and not be in a romantic relationship, I say. I yeah, don't know, for me, I agree. trust is a big thing. And if I can't trust you, you cheated on me, I just feel like that will always be in the back of my mind. Yeah. And it, the relationship would just be real bitter and that's not healthy. And you wanna set a good example for your child, so. Yeah. I say no. I say no, absolutely not. So, <laughs> the next question is, how do you keep it spicy once the honeymoon phase wears off? Mm, Cam. So I think one thing is really important is novelty. And that means going on dates to new places or you know new restaurants, mm -hmm. new types of uh, activities that you have with your partner. You know, we did like that indoor <laughs> skydiving. <laughs> to a speakeasy the other day. Um, just doing different experiences, traveling. We, we took a spontaneous trip to New York City. I feel like adventure for me personally is always a good way to like get yeah. those endorphins. Is that the right? Yeah. I was about to say endomorphs. They used to be a show. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's animorphs. Get, oh, animorphs. That was a good show. Okay, but get those endorphins going, you know, and something. The animorphs, yeah. <laughs> get yourself excited and then, you know, get your blood pumping. Do something mm. fun that you guys, neither of you have done before. Yeah. So it's like you're going into uncharted territory. You can protect each other, you oh, know, yeah. stuff like that. Physical activities together. And like that's Lauren sexy said. and fun. Yeah, do something that you haven't done. Have fun. Step outside the box. Talk to your partner about mixing it up in the bedroom, right? See, maybe there's things that they want to try but maybe they're kind of shy to tell you about it. Just mm -hmm. kind of give them that open forum to talk about it. And don't stop dating each other. Go out to a sexy dinner, wear a revealing dress, oh, you know? All right. Send them some news earlier in the day or something. Oh. <laughs> you're smart, you're loyal, you're grateful. I appreciate that. All right, let's go to I'm the gonna next play this question. Back. <laughs> I knew he was gonna say that. <laughs> Uh, your take on living with an ex after a recent breakup while starting a new relationship. <clears throat> Do I even need to say anything? Come on, y'all. That's an absolute no. Like, look, if you're living with your ex and you're trying to start a new relationship, I mean, you gotta have like that hygiene in your relationship. Mm. You can't be polluting your new relationship Ooh. with your old one. Hygiene and polluting your relationship. Come on I now. like that. It's just gonna cause more problems than it's worth. I mean, I know a lot of people, like, you know, money can be tight. Maybe it's not so easy to get a new place all of a sudden, but if that's the case, probably shouldn't be out here dating. Hello, my grandma used to always say, you can't shit where you sleep, okay? If you're still in the middle of some mess, it's not a good 
good idea to bring somebody new into that mess. And plus, it's just kind of awkward, right? It's like you're trying to make out with your new person while your ex is in the kitchen fixing a bowl of cereal. Like, yeah. it's awkward. And I just feel like the other person that you're dating probably wouldn't be a big fan of that anyway. I know for me, if I was the person that was dating that person, I'd be like, so y'all still having sex? Like, there's no right. way that y'all are living in the same close quarters yeah. and y'all not getting some. So nice. I say, you know, when you're ready to move on fully, get your own place, stay with a friend, whatever, just kind of restart your life, revamp your life since you guys are so connected as a couple, then maybe move on and start thinking about dating. So our next question is, what are some signs that a man is willing to commit? Mm. This was probably the most frequent question that we got, which is why we need to answer it. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. I know when I was single, I wanted to know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So first of all, you have to think about like, have you had that conversation with this person? Like, hey, I would really love to move forward with you and be your fill in the blank, girlfriend, wife, husband, boyfriend. And if they say, hey, I'm not ready to get there, you have to ask them, what is it, you know, what do you need to help you make that decision? And if they can't give you an answer to that, then how long do you think it's gonna take? I mean, if there's no forward movement, you might be waiting forever. And you have to ask yourself, are you ready to wait indefinitely? Ooh, that's some heavy stuff right there. I think the thing that got me is what you said, when you tell the person you want to be with them, they're like, I'm not ready. And then asking them like, what do you need to be ready? That's that's hard to ask. It is hard to that's, ask. I mean, at least for me, as soon as I say, do you want to be in a relationship? And they're like, no, I'm already, my stuff is already in the bag. But you know, right. maybe it is worth a little bit more of a conversation, but. Well, well, I think it's because a lot of people, their partners will say, well, I really like you. I'm just not there yet, mm -hmm. right? They're like, let's take it slow. But then it's the question of, well, what is it going to be that's going to change your mind to give you that clarity to say, oh, I think we should move on or no, I'm ready to take that next step. So basically you're saying, don't try to just be like, oh, I think he's ready. Just ask him. Like, yeah. do you want to take this to the next level? And depending on his answer, you got to make a decision. I think this is a case where you say to that person like, hey, I want to be in a relationship with and if they say, yeah, I'm not ready for that yet, you have to figure out what's it gonna take. Otherwise, you have to either accept that it may never happen, mm. or you gotta move on. Listen, y'all know that meme with Viola Davis where she take her purse and she'd be like, oh, she gets up to leave. <laughs> that would be me, honey. All right, one last thing I wanted to say yeah. is there is a case where like someone's making small changes, right? but they're ever so small, incremental changes, you know? If they were at least willing to have this conversation with you and be like, hey, like, I need to see, like, if you are willing to meet my parents and how everything goes there, or, you know, I need to see how it is if we were to live together. Like, at least you have a That's ground- That's big thing. A ground forward, That's right? not a little small, hey. No, but we're wanna... talking about really having a relationship and it's like are you just playing house or you actually want to have a relationship it's a lot of people out here playing house yeah. if you just want to stick around and have fun just know that that's what it is though yes. that's the tough part is not getting those emotions like right. i want more but it's just a fun time and then you can't really complain about it right because you made that choice this question kind of made me laugh a little bit because i've honestly been here it says would you date a man with kids I think I've made a terrible decision. <laughs> My first boyfriend had a child and I swore from then I would never date another man with kids. But that gets more and more difficult the older you get. You know, people are having children younger these days. Yeah. So in the dating world, it's kind of likely, depending on your age, that you may come across someone who has a child. Yeah. Um, would I date a man with kids? I marry, and if I was single, well, I'm older now, so I probably would have thought about it. Mm. <laughs> but it's hard because when you date someone with children, you have to keep in mind that the other parent of that child, if living, will always be in the picture. Yeah, I've dated women with children before, and it's a similar thing where it's 
kind of like what we we're talking about with the commitment, right? It's like you already know it comes with an additional layer of commitment. Mm -hmm. And I think I realized very quickly in those cases, I was younger then, but in those cases I realized very quickly I'm not ready to commit, you know, even if I don't have to play the role of a father, it's still a lot of responsibilities and it will, if the relationship gets more serious, mm -hmm. that will come to bear where you will have to contribute to that child's life. It could be a blessing to the child. I feel oh, like yeah. if you're in a relationship with someone and you love them enough and yeah. they have a kid that you kind of want the best for that kid too, yeah. which would be a good co-parenting relationship oh, yeah. for everybody. I don't want to speak for everyone. I, I mean, we're just sharing our experience because yeah. I know people personally who have fallen in love with someone who had a child or children and they're very happy in their relationship you know they became the father or the mother to those children in in many ways and it's a beautiful thing <laughs> <laughs> this question oh i just i wasn't expecting it i didn't see this one. Oh man oh. <laughs> <laughs> tiffany slipped this one in here this is very funny is it wrong for me to forgive my boyfriend because he said shut the fuck up in an argument or fight? He apologized. <laughs> I mean, how did he say? <laughs> shut the fuck up. It's not funny. It's not funny. I mean, it is funny. It's funny to me because <laughs> I feel like we've all been there, sis. You're not alone. I feel like. Well, we've never said that to each other. I mean, we've said it without saying it. I mean, not Everybody, like that. I mean, saying it like this is a little aggressive. Yeah. Um, yeah. But. Yeah, I how like aggressively did he say it? As long as it wasn't like on abusive terms, like it wasn't like super verbally abusive and it wasn't, right. you know, it wasn't abuse following that. Maybe it was a heated moment, you know, sometimes. I feel like that's something you can forgive. Be like, okay, yeah. you were upset or whatever. But now if he does it all the time, then that's something y'all need to revisit. But <laughs> was it insensitive for us to laugh at that? It was just funny. Well, it just, I think we pictured a, a funny scene. If I told you to shut the fuck up, would you forgive me? Not for a long time. Really? Well, it depends. Maybe it depends on how you apologize. Well, wasn't abusive and he said he'll never do it again I guess and um, you know people make mistakes sometimes people get emotional and they say things when they get upset yeah. that doesn't mean you should throw the relationship away right um, like we said we, we need more facts we don't know what you what happened prior to him saying did he say it in front of your family was you know, it just is it a pattern did he say it in, you know it's like right. we need more facts because this is kind of connected says, should I keep waiting after six years for him to propose? Damn. I'm sorry. So what does he say when you say, hey, I want to get married? Does he just say, ah, I think we should see how this goes? Because I feel like six years is probably enough time to figure it out. So try to figure out what it is, like kind of what we were talking about earlier with the commitment. Like where, where is that gap? Like, what is the questions in his mind that are swirling for him to figure it out? Yeah, I mean, six years is a long time. You know, it's like, what could he be unsure about at that point? I mean, you guys have gotten to know each other quite a bit. Yeah. You probably live together, yeah. possibly. Six years, that's longer than we've been married. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it depends if marriage is that important to you, sis, or sir. Um, then you need to like let that be known and if it's not that important to your partner then you know maybe you guys need to figure out if the relationship is more important than actually just saying that you're married and, and are you okay with that do you need to be married is, are you happy as things are here's when it says what are some things that should be included on the list for a partner so i feel like the list for a partner is kind of different for every person, right? Because yeah. everyone has their things that they're looking for, everyone has their things that's prioritized, so it's kind of hard to just have a general thing. But if I was to name a couple items that could be general, yeah. I would say respectful, I would say um, 
what you said. Yeah, time. respect is number one. Mm-hmm. Consistency. Consistency. Like they do what they say they're gonna do. I mean, mm-hmm. we, you know, we all have goals and we may not always get to them, but are they working towards mm-hmm. whatever that is? Yeah. Um, Some. You know, are they taking out the trash when they say they will? <laughs> you know, this type of stuff. Are they making you feel valued? Mm. That's very important because. Oh. We could give you a list. Oh, that should be attractive. Oh, they should make money. Oh, she blah, blah, blah. You can have all that stuff and still feel like crap in a relationship. So I feel like an important thing is that you feel valued, you feel respected, and that that person is consistent. Other than that, it could be you have to kind of, you know, yeah. make it cut to fit you as an individual. I'll tell you this, y'all. Nobody is perfect, okay? Y'all can have a million things on your list. And then y'all are looking for somebody to fill every single, check every box on that list. It's not gonna happen. I mean, except for me. (laughs) No one's perfect. (laughs) Okay, guys. I love Cam to death. I feel like he's perfect for me, but he's not perfect. I'm not perfect. So, like I said, you have to find the person that's perfect for you. Kind of adjust some things sometimes. You know, when you meet someone, maybe they have this quality, but not that one. Which ones are your priorities? So just kind of be open-minded when it comes to love and dating. That's what I had to do, going on Love is Blind. Of course, I had the things that I knew that I wanted and this and that, but I also knew that sometimes you have to adjust. You know, life throws you curveballs, and you have to be able to kind of swing around with it. And that's the same thing with love. So just keep an open mind and an open heart, because you never know. Okay, next one. Um... So our next question is, how do you step outside of your comfort zone during sex with your partner? Very important question, right? Because we know that relationships have this sort of honeymoon phase in the beginning where you like can't keep your hands off of each other and then they sort of mature over time. So it takes a lot of work to keep that spark going, keep things passionate. I mean, my, my opinion is that you should, I mean, again, talk to your partner and be like, hey, like, what do you think about our sex life? Like, are there some things that you want to do that we haven't done before? Like, I'm open to it. You know? Cam is very direct with his communication, but everybody's not that bold, you know, kind of takes a lot to be like, hey. You this, is your par- this is your partner. <laughs> well, you, what, you can't be I dancing mean, around stuff. That's true, but... Your partner can't read your mind as much as you think that they should be able to. So mm-hmm. ask them, like, hey, like, I really... First of all, I love you. I think you're sexy. I want to make sure you're satisfied sexually. So what are some things that you want to do? Like in the bedroom, like... Positions. So would you say people should ask first or should they just like surprise them like just show up with <laughs> some handcuffs and dress? I, I like mean, a, yeah. Role play stuff. Or actually, I don't know because that could go bad because what if the depends. person's not into it and it's like... Why? I mean, it depends on how freaky it is, I guess. Like if it's something super freak and that's subjective. I mean, what right? is super freaky? Exactly. That's subjective, right? And, and one thing too I'd like to say is like just because in the past you said, you know, let's not do this or let's do that. It doesn't mean that that's static, right? People change over time. Although, if they said no a couple times in the past, don't keep bringing it That Right, I'm not saying that, (laughs) but I'm just saying like, you know, it doesn't hurt to like check in with them and be like. Yeah, check-ins are great. We answered a whole lot of questions. Some sexy questions, some relationship questions, some marriage questions even, I think. Oh yeah. Yeah, so, we hit the gambit, but mm-hmm. I really appreciate all the questions that were asked, the stories that were shared. Yeah, we appreciate you guys being vulnerable with us and telling yes. us about your stories and your love. And once again, this was a judgment-free place. Some of the questions, we were just having fun, but we truly wish you guys a happy Valentine's Day. Lots of love, yes. lots of sex, yes. and healthy relationships. Amen.